Now reporting, Tom Yamas. And good day. We are coming on the air with breaking news. President Trump is meeting with troops in Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq, west of Baghdad. This is the president's first visit to a combat zone since becoming commander-in-chief. These are the images that we've just gotten right now. You can see both President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump meeting with troops there. The president had hinted at this trip in recent weeks, but for security reasons, could not provide any details. And because this trip was meant to be under the radar, quite literally, we are still gathering information. This trip does come with the backdrop of two major moments in his presidency, first being some of the chaos in Washington right now, the shutdown underway amid his own staff shakeups, but also, and more importantly as it relates to this trip, his decision to pull troops out of Syria and also an expected drawdown in Afghanistan. And his Secretary of Defense, we should mention, has just resigned. With that, I want to get to our senior national correspondent, Terry Moran, who has been monitoring the president's movements from Washington. And Terry, the president will be greeting our brave men and women overseas at a time he's signaling he wants to bring troops back home. That's right, Tom. This has been his signature issue on foreign policy from the time that he ran, which is put America first. We're done trying to take care of the West of the world, especially uh, through force of arms and large deployments. That is his philosophy. But take a moment as we show these pictures. Look at the smiles on the faces of the men and women serving over there. 14,000 Americans in uniform in Afghanistan. And for anybody who's been overseas with them, as I know you have, it is great for them, frankly, to be remembered at a time like this by their commander in chief, whatever you think of President Trump. Uh, this is a moment for them uh, to be recognized, to spend some time with the president of the United States while they serve the country. But you are absolutely right. This is uh, this is President Trump and a very different mission than President Obama or President Bush had. They were both uh, very keen on making sure that the troops were there for the duration until victory, however defined. President Trump makes no secret. He doesn't want America having large deployments, indeterminate, never-ending overseas. And we're seeing the America first president over there, really, for the first time with troops in a combat zone, as you pointed out. Uh, but making a difference for them on an individual basis, as every president does. And Terry, I want to point out these images we're just seeing now. This is the first time we're seeing these images from the president and the first lady who have touched down in Iraq, meeting with the troops there during this Christmas holiday. Terry, you know, he did take some flack, though, for, for taking this long to get to a combat zone. He sure did. Uh, the, it had been noted. Uh, that other presidents, uh, President uh, George W. Bush and President Obama, made visits to combat zones uh, fairly frequently. President Trump had not, and he bridled at that criticism, as he does at pretty much every criticism. Uh, but it was leveled at him because it was noticed, uh, noticed by uh, men and women in uniform, certainly noticed by the media. But this is, this is what he is doing today, and it is uh, perhaps making up for that, but more important, uh, yeah, once again, just <clears throat> these are men and young men and women serving a long way away from home in the Christmas holidays. I, I spent uh, a Thanksgiving in Iraq uh, with troops once, and it just it just makes a difference for them to have these kinds of recognition, this recognition uh, in in Iraq and Afghanistan. It makes a difference for them. Okay, Terry Moran, stand by for us. I want to bring in our chief global affairs anchor, Martha Raddatz, who has spent so much time with our troops overseas. Martha, two questions to you. First, what does this mean to the troops, but more importantly, the families back here at home, and also the timing of this trip? Because as we had mentioned, Secretary Mattis resigning. He's announcing he's pulling out of Syria and the drawdown in Afghanistan. Well, well, Tom, as Terry mentioned, it, it means a great deal to the troops. It, it is always a great thing to be recognized by your commander-in-chief and having travel over there. And it, it, speaking of a conflict zone, I cannot remember really a first lady uh, going into a conflict zone right there. Um, obviously, it's less dangerous than it has been in many years in the past, and I think that's one reason the President Trump probably chose to go to Iraq is because it is considered uh, a success story right now. They really did push back ISIS. President Obama, of course, started the pushback of ISIS, but he pulled out those troops in 2011 there and had to come back, had to send them back in in 2014 when ISIS took over Mosul. And of course, uh, Mosul has uh, since been reclaimed by Iraqi forces and U.S. forces. So this is considered a success story. But when you do, when you look there at the, at the president and 
the first lady there in that conflict zone and, and uh, National Security Advisor John Bolton appears to be there as well. Uh, this really does mean something to the troops. It means something for the families back home that the president would make this trip during a holiday. And I was going to point out that we had just seen National Security Advisor John Bolton there. We, we don't see everybody that is traveling with the president, but noticeably absent Secretary Mattis and, 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 and maybe others. But again, these are the fresh pictures we're just getting in. These are the first images we're getting in from his trip to Iraq. I want to bring in Tara Paul Mary, our White House correspondent, who's live at the White House for us this afternoon. And Tara, you just got some information about some details of how this trip came together. That's right, Tom. Late last night on Christmas, the president boarded Air Force One. It was a surprise, unannounced mission, but mainly because of security reasons. He follows other administration officials. His son-in-law, Jared Kushner, went to Iraq in 2017. And then Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Defense Secretary Mattis, they went to Afghanistan last year. And I actually went with Pompeo on another unannounced surprise trip. And the reason is that it is so fragile on the ground, the security in this region. When we traveled with Pompeo, we had to actually land in Bagram and then take two flights to get to Kabul because when Mattis had traveled there, they actually, the Taliban tried to attack the air base after he left. So it's a really fragile situation. And President Trump reportedly was nervous about taking off for the Middle East. But as uh, Terry and Martha have noted, he's taken a lot of heat for not visiting the troops abroad, especially during the holidays. And uh, I'm sure it goes a long way for them. Tara Palmieri with some of that new reporting this afternoon. Tara, our thanks to you. And again, as Tara said, these, these trips are so dangerous. They literally are under the radar because of the security risks. As Martha noted, the first lady accompanying President Trump on this trip, that's something that is somewhat unique in the, the last few administrations we've seen. We usually do not see first ladies visit combat zones, uh, definitely not in, in, in recent memory. So that stands out to us as well, and we will have much more on this. Again, if you're just tuning in, President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump visiting the troops, some of our troops stationed in Iraq. We're going to have much more on this story on ABC News Live and, of course, on abcnews.com, and we'll have a full wrap-up on World News Tonight. We thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Yamas in New York. We now return to our scheduled programming. This has been a special report from ABC News.